we've got our hands on the Realme 7 Pro and this is a quick unboxing and first look. The packaging screams Realme and the back highlights some of its key features, the 65 watt super dark charging being one of the more interesting things on the smartphone. We also get the specifications, 8GB of RAM, 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage and the mirror blue finish of the phone which we'll see once we get inside the box. There's a welcoming feeling with Realme's box where you find a smaller box housing, some accessories and then the phone itself, both of which we'll keep off to the side for the time being. The box comes with a fair bit in its bottom compartment, although there are no headphones if you were looking for those out of the box. You find a standard SIM removal tool, then a type A to a type C USB cable for charging, as well as a super dark 65 watt charging brick, which is amazing to see, especially at the phone's price tag. According to Realme, this will take the smartphone's 4,500 milliamp hour battery from 0% up to 100% in just 34 minutes, but we'll have to test that in due course and see for ourselves. The smaller box that we placed off to the side earlier also has some more consumer centric messaging on the rear and houses a few papers for legal information including a certification from TUV Rhineland. There's also a TPU case, not quite transparent, a bit darker if you ask us, but with a good level of protection around the front for the screen of the phone if it's dropped, as well as the buttons of the smartphone, but no flap coverings on its ports if that's something that is important to you in a case. Lastly, we come to the phone itself. The mirror blue finish sort of has this dual tone look, which we like a lot. Also, the back of the phone has a matte finish and it's made of plastic, which you can easily tell just by holding the phone. But on the overall, the 8.7 millimeter thickness is well balanced by the light 100 82 gram weight, so you get this nice feel in the hand. The left of the phone comes with the volume rockers as well as a SIM slot, which can house both two nano SIM cards and a micro SD card simultaneously but there's no 5G coverage on this smartphone. The right of the phone has a standard power button with a yellow splash, something we like again, whereas the top is relatively bare with only a secondary microphone for noise cancellation. The bottom though, you find a lot of things. There's one part of the phone's stereo speakers, the Type-C USB port for charging, the primary microphone for calls, and a 3.5mm headphone jack which is retained from last year's model, something that's nice to see. With most of the build cover, let's actually start up the phone. The SATA process is like any other Android phone and we're quickly introduced to Realme UI 1.0 on top of Android 10. The panel we see here is a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED, so no room for a refresh rate higher than 60Hz, but it makes this phone a multimedia powerhouse with the dual stereo speakers that are really good. The panel boasts a strong Strong brightness and watching content on it is fantastic, so as long as you're happy with the 60Hz refresh rate and you don't want anything more, this is a great choice. General performance is decent for the layman too, I wouldn't say the octa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G processor is the best for intensive gaming, but it can definitely get you by, there's no visible stutter as far as multitasking goes. Maybe the haptic performance on the phone could be a bit better, and maybe the bloatware on the phone could be toned down even further. Although Realme UI has done a great job over the past couple of months and years, we're just spoiled by the other phones that we've checked out recently, whether that's Nokia 8.3 5G or the Motorola G 5G Plus. And if you want to check out those videos, we leave a card above for you to go directly to that. The screen also has an in-screen optical fingerprint scanner, which is really quick, as well as a hole punch for the 32 megapixel selfie camera. And speaking of the cameras, it's a good time to address the quad camera setup on the back of the Realme 7 Pro. A 64 megapixel Sony IMX682 primary lens makes up that configuration, alongside an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel depth, and a 2 megapixel macro sensor. It's nice that Realme's thrown in so many software enhancements, so you get things like night mode, astrophotography, etc, etc, and over the next few days we'll come back with a few samples and give you guys a full a verdict on the smartphone in our full review. But that's about it for this one, thanks for watching and do subscribe for more coming up. This was Vabov and I'll see you in the next one, adios!